This video has been made available thanks to 42nd Street Photo. Celebrating over 50 years of service in the photography and video industry, check out their full line of products at 42photo.com. What's up, Geeksters? It's me, Omar, from GeeksterLabs.com. How are you guys doing today? Well, the product I'm going to be showing you guys is a product that was sent to me free for review from 42nd Street Photo. And today I have the Canon G16 PowerShot Point and Shoot Camera. So this camera will retail between $400 and $500, depending on the place you're looking at. Uh, I know 42 Photo usually has a lower price, so I would recommend you guys checking it out there before going to maybe uh, B&H or Best Buy, that type of thing. But uh, let's talk about this camera. So this is an advanced point and shoot camera which means it has more manual controls than the average point and shoot camera and it also has some advanced features as well so let's talk about some of the specs first off we have here a 12.1 megapixel camera so this is a 101.7 uh, high sensitivity CMOS sensor and it also packs with, it's also packed with a, a digit 6 image processor for producing like really high quality still photos as well as full HD so this will shoot video and it'll shoot full HD 1080p at 60 frames per second when it comes to video so with a high with an ISO rating of, of up to 12,800 and an aperture of 1.8 to 2.8, it does a really good job in low light, and not just for stills but also for video as well. And so with the aperture of 1.8 to 2.8, it also allows you to take those DSLR-like images with really good shallow depth of field that you would normally only find with pictures that are taken with DSLR cameras. Another impressive feature is the five times optical zoom, which gives you a range of about 28 to 140 millimeters. Which feels like you're almost going from like a wide angle view to having a telephoto view, which is good for a lot of different types of situations you may you may run into while you're taking pictures. The most surprising thing while using the zoom is the intelligent IS, which is an image stabilization. So even while walking and shooting video, it's very good at smoothing out the picture, along with having a really good smooth autofocus as well while doing video. And this camera can also do a continuous shooting as well. It can shoot up to 9.3 frames per second. Another interesting tip is that this camera can shoot raw footage in a variety of aspect ratios with uncompressed 12-bit raw file type to better suit the type of image uh, being created. And the raw plus JPEG shooting is also supported as well. And rounding off all of these nice specs is the inclusion of Wi-Fi for wirelessly transferring images uh, to devices like smartphones and tablets. I actually have another video where I give you a complete demo and a setup of, of setting up the Wi-Fi with this camera, so go ahead and check that out. The link will be in the description below. So now let's talk about some of the physical aspects of this camera. Now just to be clear, this is just a brief overview of the physical body and features of this camera. I actually have a very detailed tour and overview video that, uh, that discusses details like the dials and the settings and so forth. So if you want more information about that, check in the description of this video and I'll have a link to that as well. So now let's jump into it and let's talk about some of the physical aspects of this camera. Now starting off, this camera definitely has some weight to it. It's almost a full pound at 12.6 ounces, but the, the body housing is very solid, very durable. It feels real similar to like a Canon's other DSLRs with that, like the magnesium body. It has some really nice rubber grips on the back and on the, on the front as well where your hand goes. And when you see the setting dials, it looks very similar to what you might expect on a DSLR camera. And having that exposure compensation dial handy makes it easy to adjust lighting in your images on the fly. One side note is uh, the built-in stereo speakers actually did a really surprisingly good job of picking up audio when you're filming video. And it also has a hot shoe on top as well for adding the flash accessories that you might want to use. So even though it does have a viewfinder on the back, I still found myself using the gorgeous, sharp 3-inch LCD display on the back since it gave me a, a live view of the image while adjusting my settings and such to help make sure that everything was, was just right. Um, it would have been a nice bonus for the LCD screen to be a touch screen as well, but maybe we'll see that in the next version. The viewfinder did come in handy though when shooting in bright outside conditions when it was really sunny. And one thing I did notice about using the zoom on the camera when it was completely zoomed out and looking through the viewfinder, you can actually see the hump of the lens in front of the camera, which I thought was kind of weird, but I guess you can just ignore and take your images and not pretend like it's not there. But that is one thing I did notice about it. Overall, guys, this is the perfect pocket camera for the DSLR user that wants to leave their larger camera at home, but doesn't want to settle with using their smartphone for taking images and video. But it's also good for the average consumer that just wants a little more control over their photos, but doesn't want to get into using the more technical DSLR cameras. Well, that's my review of the Canon G16, guys. I just want to send a special thanks to 42nd Street Photo for sending it out for review. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post those below. I read all the comments on all of my videos. If you enjoyed this video, please show some love to the like button down below. And if you want to stay up to date on all my content, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. 
And as always, guys, don't forget to stop by GeeksterLabs.com for the latest news and tech reviews. And I will see you in the next video review.